Hi there, today I just wanted to take you through changing the uh, spindle on this electric motor. This came off my 1.2 meter Cessna, uh, which decided it would be fun to take a nose dive into a very hard surface and, uh, and just put a bend, a very slight bend, in the spindle. The rest of the motor is fine, um, although it did take a little bit of the insulation off, which I need to patch up. But, um, at the time I bought a new motor and, uh, and put it back in the plane, got the plane up and running quite quickly. Um, but now it's a shame to waste the, the motor. It's a fairly inexpensive motor but the, a, a new spindle is, is even less expensive. And it's quite nice to, to replace the spindle and, and get this back up in the air. So, and I, I do have a use for this now. So I'll just take you through the process. Um, of how we're going to do that. It's quite simple. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is actually measure the old spindle and the new spindle and just make sure they're the same. Well, both spindles are four millimeters, which is good. Um, the length though is slightly different. This one is 47 millimeters oops. and this one is 49 millimeters. Um, the spindle is held into the motor by a circlip on the back um, and it's just retained in this little groove here. Well the groove is in the same relative position on the spindle um, so we just need to make sure that the, uh, the end of the spindle is sticking out of the motor just a couple of, two more millimetres to make that, um, that circular position the same at the back. So what I've done is I've just made a note, got the spindle length, uh, I've called it the drive shaft, the bit sticking out the front of the motor uh, is 12.6. So when we finish, just want to make sure it's 14.6 and that should give us the same relative position so we haven't got any slop in the motor. So, first thing we need to do is take the circlip off the back. Okay, I haven't got any uh, proper circlip pliers, unfortunately. So, what I'm going to use is a pair of um, very fine needle nose pliers and just hook those into the back of the circlip and lift it off. It's just as good as using some proper circuit pliers. Now, we've taken off the um, circlip on the back and the motor should just uh, pull apart. A little bit of resist resistance there, look, because of the magnets, but it just pulls out. Okay, so we can set this piece aside. This is fine, don't need to do anything to that. Let's just put that in there with the, with the circlip. So now what we need to do, we've got the, um, the outer casing uh, with all the magnets around the outside and, uh, and we need to remove the shaft. Now, the shaft on this is held in with a, a 1.5 millimeter um, uh, grub screw and what we need to do is make sure we have a really, really good quality um, Allen key. If it's cheap, if it's soft, it's going to bend, it's going to strip uh, inside the screw and do damage. So it needs to be a good fit. This one is a really good fit. So, put the Allen key in, make sure it's seated really nicely and try and undo it. Now I've tried this already and it is really really tight. It's not going anywhere. So what we need to do is try and reduce the hold on this. It was probably put in using some kind of thread lock. Um, obviously a thread lock that's not going to, no it won't shift. It's not going to give under pressure and if I put any more pressure on it, um, it's just going to break the allen key, strip the screw, do some kind of damage and then we've just got a piece of scrap. So 
What I'm going to do is apply some heat to this um, to uh, break the thread lock. Now, these magnets are probably glued in. The last thing I want to do is put a blowtorch on it because this will completely wreck the whole lot. I need a real um, focused spot heat on that grub screw. So, what I'm going to do is I'm going to use a soldering iron and put the tip of the soldering iron on the end of the grub screw. So let's set that up now. Just move this circuit. Okay, so... Put the soldering iron in. Now there's various ways you can do this, how you set it up um, is, is up to you, how you prefer. I'm just going to stick this firm on a piece of blue tack so it doesn't go anywhere. And then I'm going to take my soldering iron and I'm just going to use a, a baby wipe, <laughs> use anything you like on the soldering iron once it gets hot, uh, just to take off any um, solder or dirt or debris because the last thing I want to do is fill up the end of the grub screw with a lump of solder or some uh, rubbish that's going to stop the allen key going in. So we just wait a minute for that to heat up. Okay we have a nice hot soldering iron now, giving it a, a minute or two to heat up. Just going to give that a wipe, make sure it's nice and, nice and clean and I'm going to balance this onto that grub screw. Just hold it in place with a clip. Like I say, how you do this is entirely up to you as long as you've got just that point source resting on the, on the grub screw. Because all you want to do is heat that grub screw up but not the rest of the motor. You want to keep that nice and cool. I feel that starting to get warm already. So we'll just leave that for a minute or two, um, just checking that where the magnets are doesn't get warm. So we'll just leave that now and hopefully that will sort out any thread lock that's on there. Okay, so that's been on now for a while. This is still cool, um, but it's starting to get warm around the shaft and the, and, and the grub screw. So we'll take that off and now we'll have another go with the allen key see if we have more luck it's just starting to move now it's just come loose a little bit work it backwards and forwards just to free it off okay I think that is coming out now still quite stiff probably got a bit of glue around it okay and there we have the grub screw out so let's put that somewhere safe, in fact it's on the, on the allen key, nice and tight, I might as well leave it on there. Now, next thing we need to do is get the shaft out. Well, it's not going to push out, it's quite a tight fit on there. So let's get rid of this blue tack, it seems to have made a mess of my cutting mat, but anyway, there we go. Right, now I'm going to knock this out with a, um, just a small hammer and um, what I've got to do it on is a, a wooden block. I could use a, a metal vise but I don't know what damage that's going to do, uh, you know, burring it could cause around here. So using something wooden is a, is a lot more gentle. So I've just got a hole in there, I'm just going to tap it out. Just 
going to need a, a punch for the last little bit. Just move the soldering iron out of the way. Don't need to go mad at this, just very gentle taps is all that's needed. And there we go, there's the old shaft, and now we need to replace that with the new shaft. Okay, well that came out nice and easy. So what we're gonna do now is put the new shaft back in. Um, this one had a flat uh, where the grub screw went. Um, I've noticed this new one doesn't. Um, it's just a round shaft. So we'll, uh, doesn't matter which direction we put it in, which orientation. And again, we'll just tap that in. Now, we've got the, um, uh, the, 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 uh, the recess here for the uh, uh, circle clip. So what we need to do is make sure that that is facing down as we knock it in. But what we'll do actually is we'll knock it in from the bottom, I think, and then it's got less distance to travel. Okay, let's put that over the hole. Now, to make sure that this sticks out the right amount so that the, the uh, recess for the um, that circle clip is in the right place. So we said we needed 14.6 millimeters Okay, a little bit more. Couple more millimeters. Just a little bit. So that looks to be about the right place now. What I'm going to do before I put the grub screw is screw in is assemble the, the motor. Okay, that looks about right. Um, the reason I'm assembling the motor first before putting the grub screw in is I don't want to lock the screw in and find out it needs to be just adjusted a little bit more. So, let's get the, uh, the circle clip if I can pick it up. Okay, there we go. And we'll just put that on the back. Oh, that's sweet. Just a, a little bit of movement between the two parts, which there was originally, very little. Um, that seems very nice now. Okay, so let's put a little bit of thread lock on and we'll put the grub screw back in. Just a little bit on the on the hole itself and just a little bit on the grub screw. There we go, not too much. This is a, a thread lock that you don't need to heat apparently, I believe. Um, you can just um, do it with a, a little bit of uh, pressure. So, we'll put the grub screw back in. Just want to make sure. Okay, there we go. Okay, nice and tight, but not too tight. Don't want to do any damage. Um, just wipe off a little bit of that excess. And there we have it. Spindle replaced and ready to go in my new uh, my Piper. Excellent. Thanks for watching. Hope that helped.